what's up everybody welcome back to twisted life tv i am poetry you are here for another installment of pn tv that's poetry's news and twisted views good morning and um i'm kind of cautious this morning because i went and got an oil change y'all i hadn't had an oil change on my car in almost two years i like i kept refilling not two years that was a lie a, a year it's been a year since I had an oil change, but I like I kept filling the oil up to kind of keep it topped up. We actually changed the filter I hadn't did. Got my oil change, and as soon as I got my oil change, my check engine light came on. <laughs> so now I'm like, what the fuck is wrong? <sighs> I'm hoping I make it to work without any complications, because I, I can't see myself breaking down in Orlando, and people who don't help you on the road when you break down. You know, I got too much shit in this car right now for me to break down and have to have my car towed some damn work. Especially like I don't know any of these like um, facilities to trust them enough to say, yeah, go ahead and tow my car there like I did back in St. Louis. I know who to take my car to. I don't know it like that here. So this is PNTV. Ain't nothing good. I, there's not a damn good thing at all in this PNTV. So um y'all know two years ago the actor michael k williams had died and we knew it was an overdose right well just recently the person who sold him the drugs named irving carton carton oh god carton gina um just pled guilty to one count of narcotics conspiracy I have never heard that terminology used in a drug sale. Basically, the day before Michael K. Williams passed away, which was September 6th, 2021, on September 5th, uh, Irving Carton Jr.'s gang had been under surveillance by the police. FBI, DA, I'm not sure which one. I didn't read that deeply. They had been under surveillance. Surveillance camera caught Michael K. Williams' car, his license plate, and images of him doing a hand-to-hand -hand exchange for these drugs on September 5th, the day before he died. Now, the bags that the, the drugs were in had uh, logos on them like Ikea, AAA, um, Starbucks, something like that. It had a bunch of little logos on the bag. So when he was found dead in his apartment the next day, they was able to retrieve that bag. They tested the bag, y'all. It had heroin, traces of heroin, fentanyl, cocaine, lidocaine. Thought it was a fifth one. I got my notes down here, y'all. I'm trying not to look at my notes while I'm driving though. Um, there was so much shit in this damn thing. Heroin, fentanyl, cocaine, lidocaine, and caffeine. You know, usually people say caffeine, they think of soda or coffee. All the, the, the drugs that he was taking was laced with all of those things. Now, the news reports are saying it was fentanyl laced heroin. It was heroin, cocaine, fentanyl, lidocaine, and caffeine. That's just some more than some uh, fentanyl laced heroin. And after learning of Michael K. Williams' death, as had been in the news and what have you, the drug dealers in question were still selling drugs on the street. These same drugs that was out here killing people. So the leader of the gang, Irving Carton Jr., who's 39 years old, um, like I say, pled guilty to one count of conspiracy narcotics. Now, I feel bad for Michael K. Williams. I feel bad that he had an addiction that he couldn't control or that he didn't get help to control or he just, he had an addiction to drugs. Um, I do think it's, it's damn sure a law unlawful, it's criminal, it's, it's immoral. And even though I've done such things, selling drugs is, is not right. You know what I'm saying? Legally or morally. However, I don't see how if he hadn't pled guilty 
Um, Because they're not blaming him. They're not blaming him for death of Michael K. Williams. They're not blaming him for murder or assault. That's what Bible. That's that's what I was about to, to get into. I was like, I don't see how that they could charge him with that. That's not what they charged him with. They charged him with conspiracy uh, of no, narcotic substance, control of narcotic substance. Because so I was like, you have to be able to prove that Michael K. Williams was misled. That his drugs wasn't laced. How do you know that he didn't know that those drugs was laced? You know what I'm saying? But anywho, maybe that's the type of shit he wanted in his drugs. You know, people lace their shit with all kind of stuff. He had people out here lacing, you know, weed with formaldehyde. That was you no. Know, people was doing that back in the day and smoking that shit. They knew what the hell was in it, but sometimes they don't. Sometimes they don't. Um, but yeah, so he's going to jail. I don't know exactly how long he got. I didn't bother to look it up. Uh, <clears throat> in relation to the drugs, because like I said. When they said that uh, they had video footage, he was under surveillance. I don't know why it took so long. If the police were already <clears throat> tracking him and recording him, why it took to 2023 for them to actually have a case to prosecute anyone in regards to that? I guess it took Michael K. Williams' case for it to become something worth pursuing. Because I'm quite sure he wasn't the only one that they sold drugs to that day. I'm quite sure there may have been other people that was affected that particular day. Or if it wasn't, are they saying that they only laced Michael K. Williams' that drugs? I don't know. I don't know, child. But speaking of that, Coolio, y'all know, he died last year, November. And we suspected the overdose because he had been dealing with drugs a lot in his life as well. And comes to find out, he also, <clears throat> his cause of death also is fentanyl-laced heroin. <laughs> I guess fentanyl is the new crack that's taking out celebrities, people with money that can afford it. I guess it allows you to still walk around and be a functioning addict. I'm not sure what the direct effects, if anybody know what does fentanyl really do. And I might be pronouncing it wrong with F-E-T-A-N-Y-L. Because I say fentanyl, you know it's a Y-L. But yeah, that's uh, fentanyl. That apparently fentanyl is taking out a lot of these black celebrities. Maybe some white celebrities too, but I just ain't heard about it. Um, Lance Reddick, you know, uh, he recently passed. And I was praying it wasn't you no know, no drug overdose for him too. Well, the coroner's... Um, determined that his was natural causes and I was like ain't no way somebody that young died of natural causes that don't make sense to me right what they have in his medical reports that he died of heart complications that he basically had a coronary heart failure and his family says bullshit his family does not believe that heart failure was the cause one because there was no autopsy done on the body and two because there's no medical records proven that he had any type of condition which would lead to coronary heart failure his medical records were clean artery arteries were functioning property properly you know so the family is like no bullshit something else is going on so they want an investigation to be open into his case okay uh speaking of cases being opened I mentioned uh, last time that Judge Joe Brown was uh, potentially going to sue Shirley Ralph for defamation of character because she did the interview where she was speaking about her sexual assault situation and she said it was a famous TV judge. They worked on the same network. Uh, thank y'all for those who cleared it up for me that she did indeed say it was a male and she did indeed say it wasn't the... What's the other judge thing? Mathis. She said, clearly said it wasn't Judge Mathis. So... It alludes to the fact that it was Judge Joe Brown. Well, as far as I know, based off of my knowledge of law, illusion is not a crime. Um, it would have to be almost like defamation, because he wasn't suing for defamation. He was su suing for illusion. He was going to sue for illusion, which basically means that, that she alluded to the fact that he committed the crime, and as a result of that, it is negatively affected 
his reputation and or career in a financial way as well. He decided not to pursue with the case as of today's date. So there's nothing that he's moved forward with yet. It doesn't mean he won't, but as of right now, he's nothing moved forward with it. Um, in the case of Michael Darby from Real Housewives of Potomac, with the defamation suit against Candace Dillard, that case has indeed been filed. Again, when you have a defamation case, you, as the person who's filing, has the burden of proving that what that person, that the person actually said the statement and what they said has damaged your reputation and or your financial status, okay? Um, he's suing Candace Dillard for a, a two million plus, something like that. Candace Dillard has not responded at all to the claim. Okay, so basically on the TV show, there was a particular episode where they always get heated. You know, Candace always throws shots. Uh, Ashley throws shots. Everybody throwing shots back and forth on her. Candace, when she throws shots, baby, she hit below the belt, and I'm here for it half the time. I'm just saying, fuck y'all. I don't give a fuck <laughs> about your feelings if I don't like your ass. I will say what the fuck I want to say. However, you got to be careful when you in the public light like that and how it affects the person that you're speaking about. So Michael Darby was not in the room at the time this happened. Candace has made mention that I know for a fact that your husband leaves back your bedside to go over to such and such's house to suck they dick. That's what Candace said on the episode. I'm, I, I'm not getting her exact words, but that's what she said. Right now, on the particular episode, um, I saw clips because I don't watch the show no more. Bravo beeped out the name of the person that Candace said that Michael Darby was going over to suck his dick. They beeped that part out. Okay. Michael Darby wasn't in the room. And this was aired, or this was filmed, months before it aired. So, in order for Michael Darby, in my eyes, to have won this case based off of what I know about the information, he has to, one, prove that she said it. Boom. We got the proof because they got it on the camera. They recorded it. But, like I said, they did beep out the other gentleman's name. The other gentleman has not came forward and said yes or no whether that was true. Maybe um, Candace is holding it in her back pocket and that's why she's keeping quiet. I don't know. But, yeah, but I'm going to keep my eye on the case. So, two, he has to prove that it damaged his reputation. Michael Darby. Your reputation was already damaged because of all of your previous alleged allegations that you had in regards to sexual assault. And also your previous allegations you had with the grinder dude, paying prostitutes, paying male prostitutes. All your previous allegations that you've had, <laughs> you know, sucking somebody's dick is not ruining that reputation because you have already set the precedence on that reputation yourself. Okay. Um, three, that it has damaged him in a financial way. He said he has lost business adventures, da 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 da, all because of this. Okay, so this was said in a setting that there was around just the women, I guess, and the camera crew. In order for it to have damaged Michael Darby's reputation financially and business wise, it had to leave that room via somebody else. So he has to prove that Candace is the one that has been spreading the rumor outside of that room. <clears throat> In addition to, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised that Bravo is not a part of this case because they didn't have to air that. They are the ones who chose to air that. They edited out the man's name. They could have edited out that scene altogether. So I'm surprised that they are not part of the uh, allegation charges. But as of right now, no date as far as a court date or what they've done to prove anything is going forward. Um, also in courts, if you have been on Facebook from, from 2020, 2007 through 2022, Facebook been selling y'all information to third party people according to the reports. And there has been a big lawsuit that happened and they came back with a $725 million claim a settlement that they're going to pay out to people. So basically, if you've been on Facebook between those dates, I forgot the, the starting month, but 2020, 2007 and 2022, in, in time between then, 
your information has been sold to third party persons. We already know that shit. Everybody know that shit. Even though they always lie and say they didn't do it. You can be part of this claim and cash in. Based off of what I've seen, you're going to get $5. That's how much, based on how many people is on Facebook? I, baby, I don't, I ain't no talent. Okay. And it's only $725 million that they are going to award. Everybody going to basically get $5. That's basically it. You basically going to get $5. But, I mean, it's your $5, so if you want to. And it still does not change that your information is already out there. It's already been sold off to different organizations, third-party people, and they probably sell it off again. Okay. Um, I got this dude riding up behind me. So it's really like, you know, grating my nerves right now because I don't understand there's a whole fucking lane over here that you can take your black ass to. We're in a school zone any damn way. Also in the courts, Jonathan Majors. Child! Okay. So when Jonathan Majors released the text message between him and the alleged girlfriend, or the girlfriend between him and the girlfriend i was like dude this ain't help you at all that's what i was saying she's clearly saying i didn't want the police to be called i wasn't trying to file charges i'm sorry about my action i didn't mean to do this that and the third she's taking accountability for her particular actions per se right but it does say that the police arrested you because they it was clear that we had a fight they she didn't say in the text message what the fight is people argue all the time very aggressively that's considered a fight okay um but it makes it appear that there was something physical that happened if the police was able to see it not necessarily to me but that's what they that's what it's, it's making an implication or alluding to um because they could see that she's been crying, upset, stopped dripping out her eyes. They know something happened. They knew an altercation of some sort happened. That's all they could say. But they can't say that, uh, and I think they said she had a, a bruise on her head. So, yeah. But she did not go to the hospital because of the bruise, y'all. Again, she went to the hospital because she was having an emotional breakdown. All this started over a fucking cell phone call. Or a cell phone text. I think it was a call, if I'm not mistaken. She went to go grab for his phone. He tried to get the phone back from her because he didn't want her to see what the fuck it was. And then the altercation of whatever happened, happened. Now, the driver of the car that they were in is still to this day sticking to his story that she assaulted him. He never assaulted her. The other witnesses that were outside of the vehicle when it happened are still sticking to their story that she assaulted him. He did not assault her. Now, somebody grabbed your phone or they aggressively reaching towards you or what have you, nine times out of 10, you're going to do the one of them numbers like, get the fuck up off me or get my damn phone back or something like that. And her head hit the car window, possibly. This is just my interpretation of the story. And that's where the head injury came from. Some, yeah. Like, don't reach for my shit. Me personally, don't reach for my shit. I'm most likely gonna have a physical ah, get up off me type of reaction. So, but being that he's a big black buck, like I said last time, that don't look good. That don't look good on your record. Now, uh, before we was talking about the army ads that had put his stuff on pause, and Marvel was still gonna go forward with him uh, being Kang and all. And it, he just finished wrapping up the Loki. Uh, series, so he's still doing that with Marvel. I don't think that they're gonna pull it in, in uh, and I don't think that they're gonna pull it and recast it because they've already filmed that shit, right? That's that's cost a lot of money to do that, so I think they're gonna still move forward with that. However, his he don't go to court, y'all. He has not been convicted, he's only been convicted in the public courts of opinion. That's the only place he's been convicted in. Black women told him up. Off the, off the gate. Black men was tearing him up because they was like, this is your king. This is who y'all like. They hated him anyway because they was jealous. In my opinion, I'm sticking to it. 
Um, so he was already torn down in the public court of opinion. But now the fact that his management team and his PR team have both dropped him before he even goes to court. They both dropped him. It ain't looking good for Jonathan Majors at all. On top of the fact there is now several other women who have came forward to join the side of the prosecution and state that while they were involved with him in whatever manner they were, that he also, it had to be a relationship because they said domestic violence, that he abused them. So he has domestic violence charges being added to this case based off of these other women. Jonathan, it ain't looking good for you, boo-boo. I don't care if he come out of this court case unscathed. His career is gone. Just like with um with the Tiffany Haddish and, and, and is it Alan Spears? The dude with, with the charges they had with the um pedophilia case. Tiffany was not charged or all the cases, all the stuff was dropped against her. So she didn't have any type of charges against her. But baby, her career is trashed. And she can't find work. She can't get work. You know, that reputation go continuously follow her. Nate Parker. Y'all remember him? <laughs> he had those rape charges against him. And based off of the court documentations, he didn't even do shit. It was people that was around him that assaulted this woman. The woman came back and admitted it. They even you know, had sexual relations again after this, his so-called charges. But his career never recovered from that. Jonathan Majors, baby, your career is not going to recover. Because they are turning you up still in the public court of opinion. Still. I seen one post today. An old girl was like, and he got the nerve to be trying to serve us feminine masculinity or soft masculinity. And this is the type of person he is. These, these people... I swear, black people, we turn each other up worse than some other white folks sometimes. Sometimes. Um, what else? Also, speaking of course, y'all, y'all, Commander Zero, Dumb Donald, I didn't talk on this, 34 counts against him in relation to business fraud and, um, trying to pay off people to keep quiet. He'd do something wrong to them, and so they won't press charges against him. He, he'll pay their ass off and allegedly he's supposed to do this with campaign funds so he got charged with 34 counts indicted with 34 counts of that shit right and he ain't supposed to go to court to probably December or later and I think they pushing that shit back because of the 2024 presidential election I really think that's why they pushed it back however this week started a new trial against him there was a lady named E. Jean Carroll, if I'm not mistaken. I, ain't get, I can't read my paper because I'm trying to draft. She said that he raped her 30 years ago in a department store, 1990s. And he is now going to try for that. So he has to go back to Manhattan <laughs> to face charges against this allegation. So on top of his 34 counts that he already got, he now has a rape allegation against him. We already heard about the other several sexual allegation charges he had that he's paid off people. I, I'm just hoping that this push forward, something push forward with this man. You know what I'm saying? We got the indictments, but the indictment is not a conviction. He still could walk, as you know. Money talks, you know. So it's possible. Um... All these damn court cases. Lord Jesus. All right. Deaths. Ooh, child. Sick of them. Sick of them. So, Kaylin Gillis, a 20-year-old white girl from New York, hurt Hebron, New York, or that's where they were located at when this incident happened, was shot and killed by Kevin Monaghan for pulling into his driveway. That's basically what happened. She pulled into his driveway. Her and a few of her friends who were uh, teenagers, so they have not been named, they were driving around. They went to a house in error. They sat in the driveway for a, a quick second, not long, a quick second. Monahan even attests to the fact that it's only been a quick second that they were sitting in the driveway. And he opened fire on the car. Two shots, killing Kaylin Gillis. 
the other teenagers in the car said they had to drive five miles to another town called Salem because the cell phone signal was weak. They couldn't even call 911 where they were at. So they had to drive five miles away to, uh, to before they was able to even call 911. Um, he's, his lawyer is saying the fact that they pulled in the driveway and nobody got out the car, even though they were in the driveway just a few seconds, he was scared for his life. Now, the police went to go apprehend this young, this man. I don't know how old he is. I didn't get the age, but he does, he's a little young. He looks about in his 60s, what he looked like to me, 60s, 70s. They went to go apprehend him. The news says that he was not cooperating. It took several hours to get them to come out of his house. I don't know why that that pissed me off to read that, that he was not cooperating. Otherwise, what you trying to tell me, this man had a stand down with the fucking police. That's what happened. And it took them several hours to end this standoff. That's what happened. I was wondering if he was going to stop. Shit, we've been stopped. He had several hours before they retrieved him out of this house. It's a standoff. If he was black, it, he wouldn't even came out the house alive. They'd have been lit that fucking house up. Let's be honest, sir. Okay? But they had to stand off with this man. Um, he is currently still being held um, in jail. He didn't have no bond posted for him, so he's been held in jail. Awaiting, uh, I ain't gonna say charges. He's not awaiting charges because they charged him with uh, second degree murder, is what they charged him with. Now, just 16 days prior in Kansas City, Missouri, a young boy, age 16, named Ralph Yall was going to go pick up his brothers from a house. He went to the wrong house as well. I can't remember the name of the street. He's supposed to go to ABC Street, but he went to ABC Boulevard. That's the only difference was the, the ending of the, uh, the directional. And he got on the porch and within two seconds of him being on the porch, he was shot by, what's this little bastard name, Andrew, damn, okay, I'm trying not to, I'm trying not to drive and read at the same time, but the man name was Andrew, I don't know if his first name was last name, 83 year old, through a glass door, so he saw this young 16 year old black boy at his door and shot him through the glass door within a matter of seconds. He was an 84-year-old man, 83, 84. Very cognizant of where his weapon was located. Then he picked it up and took it and shot somebody through a door. But he had a three-minute court hearing, which he tried to appear like he was senile and confused and dazed. Ralph Yard's lawyer ain't buying that shit. I wasn't either when I read it. I was like, I had motherfucker know what the fuck he was doing. He knew what he was doing. But they're trying to they trying to plead um, senility. That he's unaware. He has a, a nephew in jail in Virginia, you know, trying to be real compassionate. Um, they're only charging him. What was it? They charged Andrew Lester, the man name. He's eighty four years old. Shot uh, Ralph Yard two times. They're charging him with two felony charges, right? He is out on bail. They are not charging him. The local prosecutors decided not to charge him with the hate crime. So, of course, there's protests going on all over the place. And you can see the clear differences in the justice system between these two uh, cases. Both parties approached a property that they didn't belong at mistakenly both parties were shot at twice within a matter of seconds the case in new york he's being charged with second degree murder 
in the case of Kansas City, he has two felony charges, but I don't know what those charges are. That one not being murdered though, because Ralph Yaw did survive, thank God. He did survive. So there's ongoing cases and investigations into what happened. They're gonna let this old man off. Trust to believe that. So uh, Ralph Yaw's attorney, Mr. Merrick, has decided to further the uh, charges um, and pursue action with the Department of Justice in regards to this case. And as of right now, no charges have been announced by the Department of Justice. Oh, child. So much shit. I told you ain't nothing good in this damn PNTV. Nothing at all. So I'm finna go on over to my TV shows, y'all. Um, remember last year, y'all may not remember, but remember last year I had told y'all y'all need to start watching this TV show called Riches. It was gonna be on Amazon Prime. If you're on my Instagram page, I sent y'all some links. A few of y'all said this look good, it's gonna be interesting to watch. I just started watching it yesterday, y'all. And it is just as good as I thought it was gonna be. So yes, I am still going to review that show. Um, they've already been approved for season two. I found that out, so that's what made me decide to say, yes, I'm going to go ahead and review it. Because season two is about to pop off. Um, I don't know when, but they did get approved for season two. The first episode is so good. And I actually could host a watch party on Amazon if y'all want to watch it with me. Um, basically, if you have Amazon Prime, you can watch it for free with me. If you don't have it, then you have to pay for the episode. I want to say it's like a dollar ninety nine episode or something like that. Oh, y'all just wait for my review. I don't know when I'm gonna start it because I still gotta catch up on a lot of stuff. I gotta catch up on uh, Soul Ties. I got one more episode of that. I got behind this person that ain't driving speed limit. Why did I do that? I could have been all the way up here already. And I still gotta start Tough Love, which I'm hearing great things about Tough Love. Apparently, they have several different franchises or installments within this franchise. Um, and a lot of people have seen the show. They have, uh, when I posted, they commented about how good it was and they're gonna be watching the reviews. So yeah, it's interesting. Like I said, I, I believe the one I'm watching, which is Tough Love Atlanta, has to do with the music industry. The TV show Riches has to do with uh, the beauty industry. So I'm loving that. Yes, okay. Um, King the Business. My gospel show that deals with the music industry. They just finished wrapping up filming. They just finished wrapping up filming. I don't know when a new season is going to air, but season two is coming back, y'all. So I'm happy about that. I don't have any date yet on Raising Canaan. Um, it usually starts somewhere around the fall, so I'm assuming that's what's going to happen this time. Because like I say, after season two ends, they're going to start showing season four, which is the one with Tommy. And then after season four airs, then we'll get to season three. It seems kind of backwards, but that's how it goes, okay? Um, the Wu-Tang Saga. Y'all know I was watching it, but I wasn't reviewing it. The final season aired this year. It's already posted to Hulu. It was the third and final installment, so they had three seasons of it. If you haven't watched the Wu-Tang Saga, whether you like Wu-Tang's music or not, but if you like dramatic TV shows that kind of give you a power vibe, with the music industry or empire vibe or something like that but it's based on true events watch the wu-tang saga on hulu that is really good i still have to get into i have to finish out season two so i can get into season three i won't be reviewing it but I, that's a show that i love to watch okay um if you're a fan of married to medicine i don't know how y'all feel about this girl quad she's coming back for season 10 um Ooh, my car sound weird. I'm making it to work, but my car sound weird as hell. So, yeah. Quad is coming back for season 10. Like I said, I don't know how y'all feel about that. Real Housewives of Potom to Potomac. Everybody coming back, including Robin. And including, uh... Sharice. They all coming back. And I think even Big Bird. The girl that looked like Bird. Sesame Street character. I don't know what the fuck her name is. They bring her ass back on the show too. Cha. Okay. For those uh, fans of P Valley, P Valley ain't coming back to 2024. 
There will no, about not be a, 20, a P Valley airing this year in 2023. Y'all got to wait to 2024 for that to come back. And I told y'all in my last Handmaid's Tale video, Handmaid's Tale is not coming back to 2024 also. There will not be an airing of it in 2023. They have already greenlit the show Testament. They're already working on the storyline and the script for that. Testament is the spinoff of Handmaid's Tale. Basically, 15 to 20 years later. I, it's, yeah, basically 10, 10 to 15 years later. Um, and that's going to start 2025, if I'm not mistaken. And the only other thing, y'all, y'all know Black Ink Crew. There was a, a guy on her named Four. If y'all been on Twitter, y'all have seen Four's ass and balls all over the timeline. Apparently, Four has started an OnlyFans page where he is having people give him rim jobs, blow jobs, and he in those red boots, the red, red rain boots, the cartoon boots, with his ass tooted up in the air. Child, I'm, I guess he said fuck his, his rap career. I didn't like his music anyway. But we damn sure know. Okay, I had to put up my gum aside. Let me get off here because I'm at work. Y'all don't need to know where I work at. Y'all, if y'all want to see Four's ass balls and stuff being licked and sucked on and stuff, it's all on Twitter. It's um, it's nasty to me. He is not attracted to me in any fashion. So it didn't appease me at all. I was sitting there like, I'm mad that y'all made me look at this shit. Thank y'all for watching. See y'all next video. Peace.